Dean, been a while. Oh, too long. When was the last time? <laughs> oh, it would have been the Century Club, which we're, that's why we're surrounding ourselves with something beautiful and luxurious. It actually is like the Century Club in here. <laughs> I know. It is, it totally is. I hadn't thought about that. Um, so what was that? I mean, I don't know, is it two years ago, seven years ago? Pandemic be, ago. Yeah, that's pandemic. That's what we measure yeah. the time in now. That's actually quite a good idea. Yeah. Okay. When was I last saw you? So three pandemics or three three variants ago. Yeah, time is one of those things that no one has quite got a grasp of now. So my brain is right, I think. I always get it wrong. So I'm active in the right brain. Your kind of nom de plume is active right brain. It where is. Did, where did that come from? Well, so, okay. Let, so <laughs> where did it come from? Minus an E is probably the first question because that's most most people. So if on social you go looking for me and you put active with the real word with the E on the end, uh, you won't find me because Twitter has a restriction on the number of characters. So I ended up as active without an E. Oh, the, the active and the right brain is so essentially if your right side of your brain is active, it's your creative side. Um, now that's always going to be my dominant side, um, but I've always I've always approached whatever I've done with actually uh, uh, trying to keep that as equally balanced as possible. And that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's me because this, I'm never going to be someone that is 50% Excel spreadsheet and 50% creative. Um, I will thoroughly immerse myself in understand all the creative side of things, but then understand that the benefit to everything that goes out there is the 50% of other people that are skilled in those things. Um, which has always been, you know, you look at any technology, so you look at fast tech, uh, that's probably one of the best examples of where it goes horrendously wrong in one way or the other. So the first kind of smart watches and wearables were either hideous lumps on someone's wrist that did to a point what they were supposed to do technically, um, but looked awful. Or they were something like a Will I Am smartwatch that actually functioned as a, more of a bracelet or a, some kind of cuff, yeah. um, but did nothing on the technological side. So yeah. it's it's that tricky balance. But obviously the tricky balance is the thing that either provides a successful project, or if you do go one extreme with the other, does give a bit of drama. Google Glass. Didn't you have a story about that? In the, <laughs> like, didn't you tell me a story about that once? Well, Google Glass. So which was appalling, by the way. Well, okay, I'll tell you why. One of the reasons it was appalling was because Robert Scoble wore it. Um, and didn't he say he was going to wear it for the rest of his life? Well, he did because he wore it in the shower. In the shower, that's uh, right. Yeah. He's such an... I'm, 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 whatever. <laughs> well, I'm, again, if you're going to apply a, a, a tech pundit to your project and your product, then you're, you've already applied the wrong type of person. Absolutely. Um, you know, again, give him his due. He doesn't know his stuff. He doesn't know what he's talking about. However... Um, Google Glass in itself is one of those things, so I'll talk about AR, is it's one of those things that the story is all wrong. So I'll yeah. give you an example. So the, the, the whole point was everyone's going to wear these things in the future. Um, so the, the, you know, the story beyond that is, hang on a minute, it falls down when you think about what do people actually do. So rather than saying the evolution of a piece of technology is, Right, we can build, and we can design, and we can sell all of these things at that rate. However, what people actually want to do with it goes off on a completely yeah. different tangent. Yeah. You know, I, I, I conceivably won't want to wear glasses because I don't wear glasses. I do to read, but beyond that, I'm not going to spend my life walking around with them on. So anyway, so Google Glass, I, um, I was on the original Innovator startup program to go and collect them from New York, the Google office, got out there, went through all of the checks and I'd been sized up and I'd been set up and I was prepared and I'd, I'd got my Google Glass on. Um, and then they said, well, okay, we've got your ID, um, handed over my passport and they're oh, right, you're British. <laughs> no, no way. Can't take them away. Um, so they wouldn't what? let they wouldn't let me back out of the building again. Why? <laughs> but it, it was it was one of those. So you know, it, essentially, we jumped through some hoops to to get right. me to that okay. point. Um, and at no point had it said, "Well, actually, are you a, a, a U.S. citizen?" Um, and there I was, ready to to walk away and contribute handsomely, of course, to the development program. But no, it wasn't to be. I had to wait however long it took to actually get them back to the UK again months and months later. I think you probably dodged a bullet there. But, well, that was then. Now, in our pandemia, 
or wherever we are in the world um, where time has lost all sense of meaning. Um, what's going on, man? Man of the future, active right brain. Well, I think it's a bit of a bizarre focus at the moment. So if you, as, as I do, I tend to dig under the skin of social yeah. for what's actually happening and, and, and not, again, this is the, the kind of the tech punditry piece, rather than listen to secondhand information, it's about listening to what people are actually talking about that are actually doing something. And what's been tougher than any time I've ever known it is to hear through the noise. And there is, so for example, we're talking about the metaverse, we're talking about NFTs and crypto, and anyone simply coming to that for some information to say what is going on, what is actually going on is real infighting and extreme conversations between people saying it's all crap, it's never going to exist, or it doesn't work, or I hate it, or I don't like it, I'm not going to buy into this, to almost cult-like status. Yeah. <laughs> so for, <laughs> the thing that I never thought that I would see, so Gary Vee, I, I really respect the guy as a, as a marketer, um, and he, he, he can sell anything to anyone. What I don't get it's not that so i don't get it i don't subscribe to the cult-like status that is being pushed his way in as much as he'll create something that i wouldn't let my kids put on the fridge as a piece of artwork and he'll sell that as a series of nfts um that everyone rather it's, it's kind of an emperor's new clothes yeah. approach no one wants to say actually if that's not worth anything like that. And, and it's not so much that, you know, it, it's, it's the impression that that then gives of all artwork within the NFT space. Mm. So yeah. from my role as um, president-elect to the Chartered Society of Designers, I've, I've never been more hot on quality um, over quantity. And right now we've got a lot of quantity yeah. of everyone wanting to jump on the NFT art bandwagon at the moment. And what I do appreciate is encouragement. Yeah, that's a great thing. But there, there is a point where it's a little bit like the, the changing rooms TV analogy of everyone's an interior designer. Yeah, OK, everyone can design something in their interior, but it doesn't make them a designer. No, and more importantly, it doesn't make them a good designer. No. So at the moment, we've got the opportunity for everyone to be an artist. Yeah. And in that immense amount of noise, um, what's getting lost is the curation and the, and the opportunity to curate some of that. So it's kind of, it, we've got monkeys and all sorts of things bubbling to the surface, sheer value being applied to that as in monetary value rather than the, the quality of the artwork. I think, I think you kind of put your finger on it there, is that yeah. you think, you know, for the conversations we've had over the years and the things that you do, I think a lot of people would think them wacky. I think a lot of other people that, that get it would say that you're ahead of your time. It, it, okay, so the tough bit is when you're, you're not building your, <laughs> I guess, career on a hunch, um, but there, there, is a, there is a certain level of, of gambling involved. With, and, and, you're, and you know, you're gambling with people's trust, you're gambling with people's understanding, um, and to take the leaps and the meaningful leaps that you know, we should all do, mm -hmm. um, you, you have to take big steps to do that. Um, and something that was said recently, very recently actually, was, was you know, to the, folk, the current focus on, on um, space tourism. Um, now, that's, uh, the, the, the tourism is without doubt a step to actually something useful for space travel, space yep. flight, space technology and research. Um, but m so much more importantly than that, because when you're saying, oh, actually, the argument is, look what we're doing to the environment, that, that money could go somewhere else, that research could go somewhere else. But more than anything else, what it does is it gives us something to strive for. It gives us the encouragement. It gives the, you know, the, it's the human race. It gives some things to look towards. Um, and if you're, you know, we, we complain enough about incremental, tiny little steps and innovation not really being anything monumental, not being the magic that we look for. It's about simply that smooth transition, for example, from one size phone to the next, to the screen being whatever else it is. But if you take away the encouragement to really genuinely strive and take huge steps, um, that in itself, that's not about saying, well, actually, we're re 
repurposing this money over here to save the planet. The people that will be encouraged to help us to save the planet, to do all of the things that we need to do, if they're not encouraged to do it, if they're not, in, you know, they, they're not compelled to, and have got that passion inside them, then something like the, the space race that's being funded, not out of money that would go somewhere else anyway, yeah. um, but it's doing that to give the kids and, and the, the next generation something to genuinely look up to and look, and look forward to. No, quite. I mean I, I mean, I stayed up for the moon landing when I was <laughs> very, very young. Um, and... You know, there were the same arguments that were going on at that time. You know, why should we spend all this money on going to the moon when we should feed our people everywhere? So you look into space then. Is that what you want to do next? Well, I, I'm, you know, <laughs> I've always wanted to go to space. That's not necessarily my, my main aim and my main goal, but the, the intent is very much there. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we have, to, we have to give that, you know, that jetpack moment. Um, you know, a big chunk of what I do, I'll, I'll leap up on stage, clad in, I've got some full body haptics. Um, Are you wearing them now? Of course, yeah. you're always wearing them. Oh, yeah. Well, it's so, I'm, it's so I'm fully experiencing our, our conversation together. <laughs> but, but it's the, the thing is, the, the reason that I'll take things to that extra level is not simply for shock value. Um, yes, I'll shoot a few fireballs here and there, but that's simply to add the entertainment value and the drama to yeah. what we've got there. But the, the, the fact that that takes, um, for example, the, the metaverse, the, the, the VR environments that we're talking about, it takes everything another step further. So now we're beginning to talk about the possibilities for VR. That was four years ago, strapping myself to the top wing of a biplane so that I could <laughs> immerse myself more physically in a virtual environment or get my tattoo in, um, in VR to, to see if we could mitigate pain via a virtual environment. All of those things were to push what we are just accepting of. So we're, if we're accepting a VR and it's, this is a headset, that's what we got, fine. Yeah. But actually, if we've got a headset and we are feeling so much more than we actually could do in, in, in the real world, then that's, you know, they're, they're the kind of steps that I want to push. Well, Dean, as usual, uh, you're frying my brain. Um, <laughs> I might just have to think about that. Can you give me, uh, give me a couple of days and I'll get back to you? <laughs> but I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Thanks a lot, Dean. Really, really interesting. Thank you. <laughs>